Today, I am watching Ben Sanders. Yeah. Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another episode of Archive 5. So, in case you haven't seen this in play elsewhere, basically this is where I take a bunch of archive videos and sort of wodge them all together into one super video, because apparently I make videos faster than I can release them. So today, as you've probably seen from the title, this is going to be five back-to-back -back episodes of five bookish facts, which actually makes it 25 bookish facts. I'm going to put the timestamps in the description below if you want to skip to an individual episode, or they'll also be on screen here as well. So today, we are going to have five bookish facts about Sylvia Plath, and this is for Catalyst Reads, who keeps complaining that he asked for it ages ago and I never posted it. This is why there's a backlog. We're going to have five facts about J.R.R. Tolkien. We're going to have five facts about Daniel Defoe. We're going to have five facts about Margaret Atwood. And we're going to have five facts about Harper Lee. How exciting. Do you know what I've just realised as well? This is 60% female. We're doing good. This is some good representation here. So anyway, without further ado, let's get to these back-to-back -back episodes of Five Bookish Facts, I guess. Enjoy. Hi guys, Dane here. It's a Wednesday and you know what that means. It is time for another episode of Five Bookish Facts. Today, we're looking at Five Bookish Facts about Sylvia Plath. So this was a request from Catalyst Reads. And by the way, please do leave a comment below if you have a book or an author or a series that you would like me to cover in one of these episodes. And without further ado, let's get Five Facts about the one and only Sylvia Plath. Let's go. Okay, so we all know that Sylvia Plath was a genius, but perhaps you didn't know that she is actually a genius. So when she was 12, her IQ was recorded at 160, which is literally genius levels. One other thing to mention is that IQ levels go up throughout the years, and she took this test back in 1944. So by today's standards, I mean, she could have been a scientist. She also had a first published work at the age of nine. It was a poem called Poem in the Boston Herald in 1941. So Plath wrote The Bell Jar about her own mental breakdown and she struggled with writer's block for years before just suddenly getting the book written very quickly. So basically in 1961 she had a poetry collection called The Colossus and Other Poems and this got picked up for publication and when that happened the writer's block disappeared and she got working on The Bell Jar. She used to write The Bell Jar in the mornings and it took her 70 days to finish it. Okay, so fact number three, obviously it's very well known that Sylvia Plath committed suicide by putting her head inside a gas oven. But what people don't necessarily know is that her son, Nicholas, also committed suicide. So his name was Nicholas Farah Hughes. And in 1963, when Plath committed suicide, he was only one years old. He grew up under the care of Ted Hughes and he got into wildlife and conservation. He actually got a PhD in biology from the University of Alaska Fairbanks and became an expert in stream salmonid ecology and he worked for the UAF until 2006. In 2009 at the age of 47 he hanged himself during a bout of depression, RIP Nicholas. Fact number four, Plath is obviously well known for being married to fellow poet Ted Hughes. The first time she met him, she was so excited to meet him that she bit him on the face. Literally bit him on the face. When they left the party that they met at, Plath actually noticed that Hughes had blood running down his face from where she bit him. So fact number five, the flat that Plath committed suicide in was at 23 Fitzroy Road, London. She lived there for a year from 1962 till 1963 and it was actually previously owned by another poet, W.B. Yeats. And now Plath thought that this was potentially a good omen for her own life there, but obviously it tragically didn't turn out like that. So there we have it, those are five facts about Sylvia Plath. Apologies if it's a little bit bleak, but she obviously did live a bit of a bleak life unfortunately but her work is stunning and if you can read it you should definitely check it out thank you to michael from catalyst reads for requesting this episode and obviously if you do have any requests of your own please do let me know about any book series authors etc in the comments and i will try my best to cover as many of them as i can in the meantime don't forget to hit subscribe and i'll see you soon for more bookish videos and every wednesday for five bookish facts thanks a lot bye
Today, I'm watching Red by Zoe. I don't think she really needs a shout out because her channel's massive, but whatever. Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another episode of Five Bookish Facts. Today, we're doing five facts about J.R.R. Tolkien. Yay! This was requested by Read and Find Out, so thank you very much for that. Be sure to let me know in the comments as well if you've got a request for a future episode, and I will see what I can do. Without further ado, let's get started with our five bookish facts. So fact number one is that during the First World War, Tolkien was a signal officer. He actually kept getting trench foot and he came back to England in 1916. He wrote the Book of Lost Tales while he was in Staffordshire, recovering from the Somme as well, one of the deadliest battles of all time. When Tolkien's son joined the army, he put his father's occupation down on the form as wizard. Okay, so fact number two is that one of Tolkien's favourite sayings was actually one of his own sayings that he wrote, and it was, Never laugh at live dragons, Bilbo, you fool. Okay, fact number three is that after the war, he moved to Oxford and took up a post working on the Oxford Dictionary. So his job was Germanic words that start with a W. So fact number four is that when Tolkien was just a baby, he was actually kidnapped by a houseboy who was captivated by him. Obviously he did eventually make it back. <laughs> it was just for the day, just a, just a one day kidnapping. And fact number five is that while Tolkien was studying in Oxford, he actually borrowed a lot of money and spent more than he could afford to to try and keep up with his uh, more affluent friends. At one point he even stole a bus and took them all on a joyride. There's an ice cream van outside. So anyway, there we have it. Those are five bookish facts about J.R.R. Tolkien. As always, please do let me know in the comments if you've got a request for a future episode. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this. Hit subscribe if you're new here. And I will see you soon for more bookish videos. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Hi guys, Dane here, and today we are going to be doing five bookish facts on Daniel Defoe. Now, this might not look like much, but trust me, it is a Daniel Defoe book. This is my copy of Journal of the Plague Year, which I read for university. While I'm at it, I might as well show you this book, because it's very pretty. What's this? Uh, yeah, 1913. So, uh, yeah, I was pretty happy when I ordered it and this arrived, so I read this for uni. But anyway, this was requested by a Novel Crawler, so thank you very much for the request. And without further ado, let's just get to it. Fact number one is that during his writing career, Daniel Defoe is believed to have used at least 198 different pseudonyms for his published work, which included novels, non-fiction, pamphlets, essays and poems. 198. That's a lot. So Daniel Defoe died on April the 24th of 1731 and the story goes that he was hiding from people he owed money to when he died of a stroke. Okay so fact number three is that Defoe's first ever literary piece was published as a pamphlet in 1683. His novels included Robinson Crusoe, The Father Adventures of Robinson Crusoe, The King of Pirates, Captain Singleton, Memoirs of a Cavalier, A Journal of the Plague Year, Colonel Jack, Mole Flanders, and Roxana, The Fortunate Mistress. Then his non-fiction journalism work included The Storm, The Consolidator, Atlantis Major, The Family Instructor, Memoirs of the Church of Scotland, The History of the Remarkable Life of John Shepherd, A Narrative of All the Robberies Escapes of John Shepherd, The Pirate Gow, and several more. Okay, so fact number four is that he was once put in the pillory for one of his pamphlets. So this was in 1703 and he wrote a satirical pamphlet called The Shortest Way with the Dissenters. And the idea was it was attacking the treatment of religious dissenters in England. He was put in the stocks, but instead of the crowd showing up and throwing sticks and rotten fruit at him, they started to throw flowers at him instead. They also chanted his own poem called Hymn to the Pillory in support of him. And fact number five is that Daniel Defoe's birth name was Daniel Foe. He actually added de from French just to make it sound a little bit posher and more intellectual. So he was born in around 1660 as Daniel Foe, but the exact date of that is unknown. 
He lived through the Great Plague of 1665, which he wrote about in this, Journal of the Plague Year. Then there was the Great Fire of London a year later, and he was almost killed in the blaze, so all the houses in his neighbourhood burned down except for Defoe's and two other houses. So there you have it, those are five facts about Daniel Defoe, thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions or requests for a future episode and I will see what you can do. In the meantime, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you soon for more bookish videos. Thanks a lot, bye bye. Today, I am watching Mark Nash, and he's talking about fan fiction. Well, he's talking about whether all fiction is fan fiction. Spoiler alert, I don't think it is, but I haven't ex decided how I'm going to formulate my answer yet. Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another episode of 5 Bookish Facts. So today, we're doing 5 Bookish Facts about Margaret Atwood. And we're doing this pretty much because I buddy read The Handmaid's Tale with sophisticated books. And uh, she, she said I should do an episode on Margaret Atwood. And I'd been thinking the same thing. So without further ado, let's go. So fact number one is that Margaret Atwood's literary office is called O.W. Toad. And that's because it's an anagram of Atwood. She also has two desks in her office. And one has an internet connection and one does not. Okay, fact number two is that she wrote her first ever novel at the age of seven. It was about an ant. She also read George Orwell's Animal Farm at age nine because she thought it was an innocent kid's book about farm animals. She's also in her high school yearbook saying that she intended to write the great American novel. Fact number three is that in the 1970s she was also an underground comic books artist so she used a pseudonym Bart Gerard, and she drew a comic strip for this magazine called Canadian Culture Comics. Fact number four is that she has already arranged to have a new piece of her writing published in the year 2114 so that will probably be posthumously unless she lives to about 150. I don't know I did some quick adding in my head then I'm not sure if that's right. Yeah, she'd be 172. And fact number five is that Margaret Atwood's favourite alcoholic beverage is a single malt scotch straight up. Okay, so there you have it. There are our five bookish facts about Margaret Atwood. Don't forget to let me know in the comments who you'd like to see an episode on in the future. Hit that subscribe button if you're new here. And in the meantime, I will see you soon for more bookish videos. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Today, I am watching Brian's Bookshelves. Hey, the spinny thing worked today. Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to another episode of 5 Bookish Facts. So, today's episode is on Harper Lee, and it was requested by By The Brook, so thanks, Brook. Anyway, let's go. Okay. So fact number one, Harper Lee went to school with Truman Capote and Harper Lee was kind of quite a tomboy and Truman Capote used to get picked on for being a sissy so she used to quite often go to his defence. They actually both had quite tough childhoods growing up and they went on to become lifelong friends and uh, in 1959 the two of them went to Holcomb, Kansas and they were there to research a murder so there had been a, a murder in a family called the Clutters which was a, a wealthy farming family. Basically the two of them went around and they interviewed friends and families of the deceased and sort of tried to get to the bottom of the murder. It was kind of an example of investigative journalism almost. So they even interviewed the two people who were suspected and eventually found guilty of the murders as well and all of the notes that they took eventually went on to become In Cold Blood. So fact number two, Harper Lee's actual name is Nell Harper Lee and Nell is her grandmother's name spelled backwards so her grandmother was called Ellen and then they called her Nell. She actually picked Harper Lee as her author name because she thought people would call her Nellie instead of Nell. So fact number three is that despite earning millions from the royalties of To Kill a Mockingbird, she actually led a very frugal life. So in the first six months of 2010 alone, she earned $800,000 from royalties from To Kill a Mockingbird. And what did she spend it on? Well, 
She shared a home with her older sister Alice and they didn't have a washing machine so used to make uh, regular visits to the laundromat or what we would call the laundry I guess here in the UK. She used a manual typewriter as opposed to a computer or even you know an electric typewriter. What she did tend to spend her money on was donations to things like the local church, to friends, to family, that kind of thing. But she herself with her own life, she, she never let the money get to her head. The fact number four is about half her least favourite authors and these have been revealed by her in various interviews. In 1964 she gave a radio interview in which she said all I want to be is the Jane Austen of South Alabama and her other favourite authors included William Faulkner, Eudora Welty and Thomas McCauley. Fact number five, obviously she was most well known for To Kill a Mockingbird and actually in a conversation with a fellow writer she said I wish I'd never written the damn thing. Several years later she was asked if she still felt the same and she said sometimes but then it passes. So there you have it, five facts about Harper Lee. Don't forget to let me know in the comments who you'd like to see a future episode on and in the meantime please hit like if you've enjoyed this episode, subscribe if you're new here for more bookish videos and I will see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot, bye bye.